Hello Minders. Welcome to the Mind Watercolor. I don't usually talk to you from this angle. This is my work angle. We're going to talk about easels today. And I had a lot of you ask me questions about easels. Now I actually have a video on easels and drawing surfaces and some solutions. It's about a two to three year old video at least. So I thought it's high time I refreshed that video and talk more about the main one and uh, also do an unboxing of a brand new one that I just now got. This has been exceptionally useful. Uh, I really, when I bought this, it was only $30. Uh, there are actually uh, probably a half a dozen clones out there. I have one in my Amazon store and I recommend them highly. It's small, it's light. Um, it sets up basically at any angle just by loosening those thumb screws there, those wing nuts. And I really, really depend on this easel. 90% of what I do is on this easel. So really, I had a hard time improving on this. And the reason I got some something new, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, to be honest with you, there isn't a good reason. I just like the look of it. <laughs> Before I move on to that, I just wanted to... Uh, put another plug in for this because uh, this is really, really inexpensive. It's a, it's a hard wood. I think it's a beech wood. Just about every art supplier sells a version of this. And you can't really, you really can't go wrong if working on an easel is what you like to do. The only modification I made, because I wanted this surface to drop down lower. Let me just show you that real quick. If you're handy with uh, woodworking tools or know somebody that is this, these modifications you can make it actually only dropped down to about here right right about there so what i did is uh and the groove stopped right about there i took a router routed them out the rest of the way routed this channel out so it would drop all the way down uh, the other uh, modification i made was this uh oak little riser here there have been times when I wanted something to sit and I'd be able to paint all the way to the edge without it falling down into this channel that they make. So I just made a little wood riser. But you could stick anything down there really. Really a great little easel. I can't complain. I will put the link uh, to this easel again down in the description along with everything else I show you today. All right, so let me show you what I got. It's gonna be an unboxing mostly and just looking it over. I can't really review it because I haven't used it. Uh, actually, I wanna show you a couple things that I bought. Actually, I wanna show you three things that I bought. One of them from a while ago. So let me just touch on this one again. I did a video on this and I will link to that video. I won't go into detail on this again. This actually latches up here on the top. And it's got a storage drawer here. I don't use the storage drawer. The whole reason for buying this is because it can sit out on the edge and this can drop below the surface of the table and it will hold a very large painting or canvas or work piece. Now, very honestly, I have not used this nearly as much as I thought I would, but the purpose I bought it for is still valid and it's there if I need it. Again, this is a very solid easel. All right, so let's unbox a new one. I'm always trying new stuff. I was given a gift card for Amazon and decided I wanted to try this. Let's zoom in on this. This is a Jack Rikeson and Company easel. It's essentially the same form factor as that light easel that I use. Just everything's a bit bigger and a bit heavier. And I really liked what I saw in the picture, so I thought, you know, Let's just see what it's like. They say this is Liptus wood, which is harder than oak. I was not familiar with Liptus wood. I had to look it up. It's a hybrid made from eucalyptus wood. It grows quickly, which is why uh, they plant it. It's sustainable. Uh, they use it in flooring. They use it in furniture. They use it for a number of things. Uh, so that's Liptus wood. So I'm gonna get my first look, I guess, at Liptus wood. If I've looked, if I've seen Liptus wood before, I didn't know I was looking at it. <laughs> By the way, when I got it, there was this big tear in the box, and it opens up right to the easel. And thankfully, I don't see any uh, damage to the wood that's showing here. 
I'm gonna look at it more carefully when I get it open. If you ever get a box like that, especially from Amazon, before you open it, definitely take a picture of it and show that the box is still all sealed. This has had some rough handling, so hopefully everything will still be okay. Ah, I guess this is the right end. Mmm, smells like wood. Go figure. Ooh, this is, this is bigger than I expected. Loose hinges here, so looks like there is some assembly required. Some hardware over here. Hardware bag. I like those big knurled knobs there. How to assemble the tabletop easel. As soon as I get this together, uh, we'll do some comparing with the other smaller one. This looks like the front, but this looks like the back. I bet this turns around. You know, Steve, it might help if you read the instructions. And I will. But I'm betting that gets turned around. That's just for packaging. And it's time to look at some instructions. And I'm going to read them all to you every bit, word for word. I'm just kidding. Attach frame B to easel base A. Well, let's let's give you the speed treatment on this and then we'll get back to you when it's done. Oh my, look at that. I can't get the whole thing in the camera. Well, that's going to be interesting. Now I'm going to have the same issue I had with the other one, is this only goes so low. However, look at this. There's a channel right here. That's probably for uh, materials and utensils. However, why couldn't I sit my drawing board right there? No reason in the world I couldn't. One of the reasons I thought I might want a bigger easel is for larger drawing boards like this. I have this drawing board uh, that I bought specifically for calligraphy because it has a metal edge for T-squares. I don't do a lot of calligraphy, but when I do, that's going to be nice. And this is more stable. The other one uh, holding a drawing board this big is not quite as stable. So there you have it. Let me lower this shelf. It's got these stops. And you know the uh, riser I made for my other easel? It's got this built in already. It also has a channel here. Let's see if I can show you that. Again, you can put utensils right there if you want. I never do that. I always lay them on my desk. But I like those channels for doing this with uh, a drawing board. I'm just going to sit down here in my chair. And that height is great. I do a lot of standing when I paint. So even up here is fine. I love these knurled knobs. I really do. Alright, so I'm going to do a comparison for you. I'll slide this to the side. Bring out the easel that I <laughs> normally use. That looks like a midget. You know, this has been fine. Again, I want to say, I'm, I'm definitely, unless you need a big easel, you don't maybe want to go this route. But I love having this, uh, especially when I'm doing smaller work like I tend to do for uh, YouTube. This has been okay, but I'm really, really looking forward to using this. So well made, so nice looking. Take a look at some some details here. These are super. Just love those knurled knobs. I wish 
these had that and I could probably find some to go on there but here's a close-up look at the top canvas holder we got some uh, grip rubbery grip nubs there for gripping a drawing board or a canvas you also have a groove just like you do here I think that's awesome for bringing your drawing board out to the edge this one did not have that which is why I made this it, it created a groove but also gave me a riser don't need that here as I mentioned this has got these little nubs that will raise it all right I wanted to show you one last thing uh, promised to show you several new things that I had been trying these are called pad pucks so just little rubber risers uh, they're usually sold uh, to be used with like light tables or digital drawing surfaces it's just a, a rubbery puck hard rubber puck and they stack when you order them you get four like this and they just raise uh, your drawing surface ever so slightly this is probably what I'm going to use for doing flatter uh, wet washes for backgrounds instead of flattening my easel but if I'm doing a lot of flat work I really like this option these have been my homemade solutions in the past these rubber door stops that still works fine the only uh, thing I can't do is stack like I can this if I, I can stack these and I could buy another set and uh, raise it even higher but then you're you know you're not flat anymore these rubber door stops uh, attached to a plywood surface work fine I, I found myself wanting it sometimes to be a little higher this was another solution I think I've shown this before this is just foam core and it it's set at three different heights all I put on here is gripper tape this is the height actually I tend to use the most this is uh, stair tread gripper tape so yeah that worked out fine but you know me always trying new things always wanting to see uh, how they work I really like these a nice nifty clean neat little solution easy to store I like to present you guys with different ideas. So, anyway, wanted to show you that. That's just an aside. All right, thank you so much, Minders. I appreciate you watching. I hope this gave you some ideas. If you're looking for easel or easel solutions, I'll keep you posted on how the new one does. Uh, for the foreseeable future, that's going to be my main easel, I think. I'm just really, really loving it. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments. Likewise, if you have something you're using that you really like, Go ahead and tell us about it. Thanks again. Appreciate it so much, patrons, for your support in making this channel possible. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.